Hello to all you beautiful people out there, Regnella over here bringing you another episode of Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. For today's episode, we're doing another epic hunting quest. This time around, we are doing a uh, Damio Hermitar, a Blaganga, and a Shogun Cenotar. This one, this one is not fun. Uh, I'll just say that right off the bat. This one is a pain. This is a, uh, a high risk hunt, if you will. Um, the first monster you're going to be taking on is the Damio Hermitar, and then the Bulganga is next, and afterwards is the Shogun Cenotar. Um, the Shogun Cenotar is, I would say, the worst of the three, and the, the first two are just there to soften you up a bit. So this, uh, this can potentially be a quest that you might do a couple times, just because it gets, uh, it gets pretty nasty. And so for this quest, what I did is I brought my usual flash bombs as well as traps. Uh, however, I distribute it like so. Uh, I didn't bother using anything against the Damio Hermitar. He's, uh, this guy is, yeah, I'd say he's the easiest of the three, um, depending on if you want to exploit any weaknesses or not. So I saved my flash bombs for the Blaganga, primarily due to the fact that he can move around, he's fast, and he, he could be he could be a bit of an issue if he's allowed free reign. So if I can stun him, keep him frozen for a little while, you know that's that's always a that's always a good thing. And the traps were going to be saved for the Shogun Cenotar, and oh, that man that Shogun Cenotar is one of my least uh, my least favorite monsters, probably one of my most hated actually. Um, and this is a quest where I almost, I actually almost lost. So I'm, I'm going to get carded twice uh, through out this particular quest, but I think only one is going to be shown for uh, time reasons. But uh, for the Damio Hermitar, uh, I have the G rank armor set ready to go for this guy on the wiki page. And uh, it's pretty interesting with uh, one of the negative skills which uh, I still don't know uh, what that is yet, um, but uh, when I find some time, I'll research it. So uh, going in to the G rank uh, Damio Hermitar armor set, the Hermitar X armor, you are looking at an initial defense of 410, a max defense of 550, a fire resistance of negative 15, water resistance of 15, ice resistance negative 20, thunder resistance zero, and dragon resistance five. Your skills include Guard Up, Defense plus 20, Bomber, and the weird one, All Resist negative 3, which is a negative skill, which uh, I, I'm going to assume that has something to do with your resistances, but it's probably not going to mean too much since you have 10 armor slots to play around with, so, you know, take that for what you will. It's a, it's a pretty easy skill to get rid of, but aside from that, there's really not much else to... Uh, talk about with the Damio Hermitar. This is one of those monsters, kind of like the Yin Kaku, kind of like the Plesioth, uh, kind of like uh, uh, more or less a one-trick pony. Like we've done this guy so many times that it's uh, not really worth talking about anymore. Um, ex with the exception of the whole jumping around thing, which he shares with the uh, Plum uh, version. And the and the, actually, I don't know if we went over this, but uh, he, the Damio Hermitar will uh, kind of go into a defensive stance. And if you hit him with a sonic bomb in the middle of that, then that uh, that knocks him out for a good period of time. So, you know, sonic bombs are a good thing to have on this quest, too. All right. And number two here, we have the Blaganga. Uh, this is a monster we don't really face all that much. I mean, he's a he's a pretty cool guy, but a little bit overshadowed by the Rajang. And uh, uh, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not, because, well, Rajang is scary. But... For this guy, like I said earlier, my primary goal was to keep him as still as possible. Um, if you see me kind of running away or something... Oh, I did save a trap from. Okay, I thought I he used uh, the majority, if not all, my traps for the uh, Shogun. And... Oh, actually... And I... Actually, I completely forgot about this. That wasn't one of my traps. That was actually one of Jasmine's traps. She so happened to just put it up uh, in between monsters, which was really nice of her. And so I put that skill on her, and if you're wondering how you do skills, it has to do with skill points in the uh, in your home, in the kitchen area, in the back of the home. So yeah, uh, Jasmine decided to uh, put up a trap and, you know, utilized it. 
But for the most part, I use uh, flash bombs to, uh, once again, keep him still. Make sure he doesn't uh, move around too much. He is a very mobile monster. In fact, I think the this particular quest would be great if you are a hunter that has a weapon with a shield. So sword and shield, a lance, a gun lance, or even a um, even a great sword. But even then, uh, I strongly discourage any slow weapon in this particular quest because you got uh, a couple monsters that are pretty fast. The uh, Shogun Cenotaur is definitely a fast one, and the Blaganga is, well, he's the fastest of the three. So slow weapons need not apply, but if you have uh, a means of going in and out of a shield mode really quick, like with a lance, then well, this is a pretty good quest to do that. Protects you, and uh, and you get some uh, pokes in, or blast in if you're using a gun lance. But uh, as for the uh, Blaganga armor set, going back over the G rank here, the Blango X armor set, you are looking at an initial defense of 440, a max defense of 550, a fire resistance of negative 20, water resistance 10, ice resistance 0, thunder resistance 15, and dragon resistance of 5. Your skills include the element attack up, quake resistance, snow resistance, and heat increase low, which is a pretty easy uh, skill to forget about. Uh, well, it's a negative skill, so. But among negative skills, it's not that bad. It's really a situational uh, negative skill. So, heck, you can even just leave it on and uh, use the 10 slots that you get for other things. But if you are in a heat-based uh, area, then, um, then you might not want to have that around. But... Um, Aside from that, it's uh, pretty much standard with the uh, with the Bulgonga. Well, as I mentioned, he's he's just a fast guy, and you know, so uh, keep try to uh, keep him still with some uh, flash bombs, and I think you will be fine. Of the three monsters, this guy did not give me a hard time, which was really weird, uh, especially when uh, compared to my first run of Monster Hunter Freedom Night, where the Bulgonga was one of the hardest monsters I could have ever faced. He was just a brutal guy he would not let up but um among the skills for his armor set though i think one of the most valuable would be quake resistance uh both he and rajang have the quake effect where he can make it so you don't um you, know, you kind of just freeze up if they hit the ground really hard so if you're able to um, kind of avoid that and it allows you to get some more strikes in it's kind of like having an earplug skill only uh, Quake Resistance is a skill you might not know you need. And I think this guy kind of cheats because he throws up uh, ice bombs. So the see, isn't that ice? And I'm pretty sure this is not an ice base area. But he's dead. And now we're going to get on to the hard one. This guy can do a lot of chip damage. This guy can be fast. And the worst of it, he has a long range. The oh man, Shogun Cenotars. The, these guys can be the absolute worst, and so that's why I saved my traps for this particular monster because I want to keep this guy from not just still, but just keep him from being able to attack. And there is even a point during this quest where I do throw a couple flash bombs just to make sure that he is in fact immune. And well, he is. So uh, don't bother. But uh, here's a little thing that he trolls. So uh, if he uh, comes up underground, he will destroy your traps. And so that um, that sucks. And it's when he goes into rage mode. That's when his pincers actually they flip open, kind of like a switchblade. And the range that he has on on those damn things is freaking crazy and this is the why he's the the biggest threat of the three it's that range combined with the fact that he gets into the ability to have that good a range because he's in rage mode and so that is a recipe for disaster and the worst of it is, is that when I have him in a trap or I have him subdued where I can get in a lot of strikes, there's a really good chance he's going to go back into rage mode like he did just there. So this guy, this guy is not fun. 
but I guess I can be a little bit thankful that there isn't a ceiling because there are moments where a Shogun Cenotar will jump up onto the ceiling or the roof of a cave or wherever, anything with a ceiling and try to fire water at you. So that's, uh, that's pretty awful. And thank God for Jasmine. She really saved my ass in this quest uh, because look how fast this guy goes. It doesn't look like much, but that damage adds up and it adds up quick. So going into the Shogun Cenotar's armor set, uh, okay, so it's the Cenotar X armor set. Uh, your initial defense is going to be 445. Your max defense is going to be 555. Your fire resistance is going to be 5. Your water resistance is going to be 10. Ice resistance, negative 5. Thunder resistance, negative 5. And dragon resistance, 0. Your skills include ESP, the art of unsheathing, and health, negative 30. And that's a pretty easy skill to get rid of because you have, once again, 10 armor slots to play with. A lot of tens today. But unlike the other two guys, uh, the Shogun Cenotar is in fact resistant against fire damage. So if you have a bow gun or an element based weapon, then you're probably, you, know, you might want to rethink your, your choice of uh, elements very carefully. But then again, you kind of want to um, uh, compare the the need to get rid of the other two versus the need of getting rid of this guy. Do you want to have uh, more elemental damage for the first two and just go all out with the third one? Or you want to plan everything for the third one and then just screw off with the other two? It's up to you, but you know, this guy, don't play around with this guy. This guy is going to, this guy's going to mess you up. And and like I said, he came really close to making me fail this entire quest, and it was my cat that saved me. So bring your cats with you. I've had a couple comments asking me, how, well, how do you get a cat? Well, there's a peddler that will sell you cats for both fighting and for the kitchen in the back of your house. But just bear in mind that a feline comrade is only in Freedom Unite, and not Freedom 2. So if you're playing on Freedom 2 and you're wondering why you can't get a feline comrade, well, you're playing Freedom 2 and not Freedom Unite. Yeah, they're essentially the same game, only uh, Freedom Unite has more content, like a lot more content. That's why Freedom 2 is completely obsolete, in my opinion. Not to say it's a bad game, though. It just doesn't compare with the amount of content that Freedom Unite has. Plus, the, the ability to have a comrade to help you fight is, yeah, I think it was probably the best decision this game has done, or this entire series has done, not just the game. And okay, so that was actually knockout number two. Um, knockout number one was uh, edited out earlier just to save on time. But uh, I used up both my max potions at this point, so I have nothing else to really heal me. It's just me and a really angry crab. And he is mad to the point where he's going to swipe like every square inch of where I've been. And I think he is targeting me uh, even when uh, uh, even when Jasmine's out on the field. Like in right before he got uh, knockout number two on me, I think he attacked me three times in a row instead of going after my cat. When, and uh, while I was doing this quest, I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, go after the cat. That's why the cats are to serve as, as a distraction. Because that's what you really need against monsters in this game. In fact, that's probably the reason why the original Monster Hunter was so difficult. Was the fact that um, it was just you and the monster. You did not have a cat distracting you and saving the day like that. And then there's Jasmine with the health right as I don't need it. The duality of having a partner. A partner that is controlled by AI. So, you know, uh, th this is a tough quest. Make sure you're absolutely prepared for it. And aside from that, you know, that's going to do it for me in this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested in any of my other content, be sure to click on one of the annotations featured at the end of this video. And I'll see you guys again in the next video. Take care, people.